If I could give my younger self a piece of advice other than uh, stop dyeing your hair, it would probably be go to Pride much sooner. I think I had, I put up a real block for myself about going to a Pride parade. So my first Pride experience was uh, about the age of 22 when I went with my first boyfriend and his group of friends and we went to Brighton Pride. Um, he was from Brighton and it was a traditional thing for him and his friends to go every year um, down to Brighton, see the parade and end up in the park. And um, it was, it was really fun. I was so excited to be in that environment and I felt just really, um, it felt really amazing to be part, to see the wider community celebrate um, the, the LGBTQ community and be a part of that and see it for the first time. Because previously I'd only seen prides from the outside um, and I'd kind of built up my own ideas of what they were about. And I didn't necessarily feel like I wanted to kind of join in on that. So it was really important when I got there that I felt that real sense of welcoming and uh, joyfulness, I guess. My favorite pride memory um, is marching with AKT through Manchester Pride with <clears throat> my husband and my stepmom, hand in hand. Um, I think just being a part of, I work a lot with AKT and, and their young people and just seeing some of the stories that some of those young people experience and the discrimination and the rejection that they experience from their family and then juxtaposing that with marching with that charity and being so open and free and welcome with my own family and hand in hand with my husband and my, I've got this amazing picture. Um, and we go every year now and she loves it and she wants to buy all the merch and get the flags and all of that. And it's just, it's so nice that we have that to share together and that she's, she's so excited to, to come and march with us. Pride means to me um, just um, exactly that. I mean, being proud of who I am, um, going out there and showing people, um, showing people that pride and showing people that sense of self and how comfortable I am in myself and in my life. And also, I think it's really important that we remember that pride is a protest and pride is a march. And so going out there and marching and making sure that we're marching for the people that don't have the privileges that I've grown up with. I grew up in a really welcoming, open family. My parents were like by their own terminology, ecstatic when I came out. And so I'm really conscious of that privilege. And I think it's really important that we continue to march until everybody has that same experience. If I could give my younger self a piece of advice other than uh, stop dyeing your hair, it would probably be go to Pride much sooner. I think I had, I put up a real block for myself about going to a Pride parade. Um, and when I got there, I really understood what it was about and, and what feeling it gave me. From the outside, I always sort of looked down on Pride a little bit and I thought it was like this kind of crazy party thing that I didn't want to sort of be associated with, which is so the wrong, which is so not true. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, I would say go out there and get out there and make yourself more integrated and a part of the community as soon as you can and do what you can for it. The last time I felt uplifted by the LGBTQ community um, was probably um, Pride last year, um, around June last year. I've started doing this annual event, like it's called a drag brunch. And due to the pandemic, we had to take it completely digital. And I actually worked with you guys with Attitude on it. And um, we raised more money during the pandemic than we did um, at the real life event. And just the support and the, the kind of... Um, the uplifting feeling that you get from people sort of wanting to take part and wanting to be a part of something like that um, was was really great and we raised an amazing amount of money for charity and it was just a really fun day when you know traditionally pride had been sort of taken away from us due to the pandemic or not possible then it was just really nice to have that same feeling my do's and don'ts for celebrating pride are don't buy too much landfill merch if you buy a flag, keep it for the year after. Um, don't buy too many plastic streamers and things like that because they just look at it and think landfill. <clears throat> um, do go out with your family. Do, you know, invite your family to go with you because I, I think you would be surprised how much they would want to come along and, and do that and see that. And I think it's really important to see that 
level of good feeling that there is towards the community at something like Pride Parade. Um, do reach out to some charities that you really like their work and see if you can march with them as part of their parade and see if there's any work that you can do for them around Pride. Pride's a really big fundraising event for all LGBTQ plus charities. It's a really big event in the year, so anything you can do to support them during that time is always really helpful. My go-to look for Pride is always something really loud, bright, and obnoxious. If I'm not wearing full rainbow, um, then I will kind of try to get at least all the colors of the rainbow in my outfit. Um, I do, I do, I'm not shy of a few colors or a few patterns, and I definitely like to um, embrace that to the fullest around Pride. Thank you for watching my Attitude Pride at Home video. Please like, comment, and share with all of your friends.